Jared Spector is living the Broadway equivalent of a rock star life, playing Frankie Valli in the smash hit Jersey Boys. Now he's showing another side to his talents with his nightclub act at Feinstein's at the Regency. Happy to welcome Jared Spector Thank here today. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm okay. You, I'm, okay. Now I'm a little I, wet. It's snowing. Yeah, I was going to say, that, people okay. can't tell, but you're in the middle of a snowstorm you came here. It's true. I had to dust off before coming on the screen, but I'm good now. So how are you feeling about this extremely snowy... Uh, New York winter. You know, I'd love. I grew up in Philadelphia, right. and I would love to sit here and say, "Oh, I'm used to the snow; it's no problem." But I gotta tell you, like the first one, I don't mind so much. But you know, now we're getting into what the sixth, seventh snow yeah. storm. I, it's getting a little. It's a little much. Yeah, it's a little much. A little dirty. Yeah, it's a little. You know, the slush piles that form, and the my the, my least favorite is when you go and you step off the sidewalk and you think it's concrete, but it's not. It's just a puddle. Exactly. It's not solid. You're no. actually and you're yeah you're down a foot, foot deep and then, yeah, yeah right and your day is ruined <laughs> and yeah. But you did have a lot of snow growing up. You were from Philly. Uh, yes, I did. I did. I, I, I had a lot of... Some, somehow snow was more fun when you were a kid, though, wasn't it? You dive into it, you play around, you throw snowballs, and then when you get older, it's kind of just a nuisance. Snow days. There's no yeah. snow days There's on no Broadway. There's no snow days on Broadway. Oh, my goodness, no. No, it could be... that we, we had that 20 inches not that long ago. We had a show, matinee, and yeah. <laughs> now, do you... Are you one of these Philly guys has a lot of pride about Philly? Philly yes. people are very... Not just about it, the cheesesteak. Not just the cheesesteak. No, it's, I mean, yeah, I mean, Philly people tend to be very... Um, <laughs> yes, very visceral about their sports, right. and uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm a very proud Philadelphia sports fan, which I know is not that popular here in New York, um, especially a couple of years ago when the Phillies won the World Series, and we actually were doing Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, and I was giving the speech that night, and I may have said something about the Phillies winning the World Series during my <laughs> Broadway Care speech, and I don't think that the light... Uh, our, our spot ops, who are all pretty diehard Mets and Yankees fans, like that all that much. But I mean, you got it. You know, I I, I love Philadelphia. Is there any good cheesesteak here in New York? I've not had one, but the, I haven't looked around that much. Yeah, how is cheesesteak for the singing voice? It's not that good. <laughs> it's not that good. I know. Now, some people get really uh, are really nuts about dairy when they're in their singing voice. That that doesn't bother me all that much. But I wouldn't have a cheesesteak, you know, seven o'clock before an eight o'clock curtain. It's a little heavy. Now, a lot of people know you started performing very young, and there's a lot of uh, YouTube um, evidence of this, which is awesome. Yeah. I, I highly recommend <laughs> going on YouTube and searching for yeah, this you man. You just made my father's day. Who, uh, who uploaded all this video? Well, I, I obviously. I mean, you know, to be fair, there are some where, uh, you know, someone will send me a link to something on YouTube and say, hey, look at this, you were right. three years old, and I, I, I have no idea the name or the user, whoever uploaded it. It could have, you know, something, usually star search things, you know, right. could be a Countess Vaughn fan or, you know, one of the people that I was against, and all of right. a sudden it's on YouTube. And But to be fair, I think um, my family has a lot to do with the the YouTube yeah, of, so you are my, related to a lot show. of the YouTube uploaders. Some, some of them, not all of them. I don't, I don't want, I, I don't want to, I don't want to paint them all in a bad light. And some, some of them might just be people who, you know, taped the Al Albert show, which was that, you know, that, right. that show that I was on when right. I was three years old. But uh, I think a lot of it has might have to do with my father. So how does a three-year-old end up on TV? <laughs> I know you can say now. Obviously, you wanted to, but obviously your parents wanted you to also. I was on TV before the age where that kind of decision making is is really in there uh, right. you know I'd like to say that if the kid doesn't have the ability to get up and sing and isn't willing and willing to learn all the words and do all the work then how are you gonna you know force the kid to go up so I must have wanted to do it and right. you know I, I, I <laughs> but you can't drive yourself to the studio so obviously my parents <laughs> took me right I mean I, you know I was on Broadway when I was 10 years old in Les Miserables and right. I didn't get to New York by myself my parents took me but if I wasn't willing and I didn't love it um, of course, I, I, I wouldn't have been there. <laughs> this, yes. all, this all built up to this big star search moment. <laughs> yeah. You versus Countess Vaughn. Who actually, <laughs> I've, I've, I always thought Countess Vaughn would end up on Broadway. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. She was unbelievable. Would you be extremely, like, would that sort of bring up some deep embedded rivalry if she suddenly was on Broadway oh, across the street? I still harbor a lot of resentment. It's been 23 years and I harbor it now. Uh, uh, that would be great. I would, I would love to see her again. I, I mean, we, you know. It Star Search is filmed like, or was, wow, is, was filmed like any other show. You know, you do a show on a Tuesday, a show on a Thursday, and they show it six months later once a week. I mean, I, I saw right. Countess Vaughn for like a grand total of 10 minutes backstage. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> right. it wasn't a whole lot of interaction, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I wish her very, I wish her very well. I'm glad she's successful. I watched a clip of uh, Where She Beat You. Yes. Which, which was that, that clip, which is. She beat me twice. She beat you twice. Yeah. Well, the clip I watched, it's so hard to like watch your face, to watch like a little kid's face when those things, you actually looked kind of like confused and 
where do I go? <laughs> and what was it? Was it like were there tears backstage? And... There were. I was just so sad and pathetic and just weeping, at, you know, as six-year-olds do. And my dad looked down at me and he just, uh, I can't even imagine how he felt. You know, you want to console your kid, what are you supposed to do? And he took out, you're supposed to win $10,000 if you win the whole thing, but I had lost. Okay. I don't know why I cared about the money, what was I going to do? I didn't even know what $10,000 meant. And my dad took out a $100 bill and he said, buddy, if I give this to you, will you feel better? And I, so I took it and I did feel better. <laughs> For a little while. Yeah. And then when it aired and I lost again, then I sort of relived it. And now every time anybody brings it up, um, it's horrifying. My favorite <laughs> moment is you say, Ed McMahon asked you about your parents. Yeah. And I have a quote. You say, my dad owns a steel company and my mom makes too many phone calls. <laughs> so I want to know, when's, when did you last talk to your mom? Uh, I talk to my mom all the time. Yeah? I talk on the phone. Does she still make too many as, phone calls to you? As a matter of you? fact, she does make phone calls to me. She does. My family's very close. so. We, yeah, we talk on the phone. How many times have they often. seen Jersey Boys? I don't, I, I couldn't even venture a guess. I, I want to say that it's probably, uh, that it's less than 50, but more than 30. You uh, mentioned earlier you actually made your Broadway debut as little adorable, precocious Gavroche, Gavroche. Gavroche who dies on the barricade. He does. In Les Miserables, a very does. sad he moment. He dies on the barricade. Uh, but it's an amazing moment. Right? It's an amazing moment. I mean, yeah. I just remember. It's kind of the star of the show. In all yeah, ways. I just look back on that and, and say, I wish I could play that role now. I mean, I know I'm only 5'7, so maybe I actually <laughs> could, but. Uh, <laughs> You've been Frankie Valley for, on Broadway for almost two and a half years, and yeah. what, in total, four years? Four, or? Oh, yeah, almost four and a half years. I was trying to figure out, are you, have you played the role more than any other performer? Yes, I have. Is that have. something important to you? Did you want to be that record holder? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, <laughs> yes, I, I enjoy having, I enjoy holding the record. I do. Yeah. It's, it's an accomplishment. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, to be fair, I'm in a cast with people who are in it from La Jolla. And right, right. so you're talking about five plus years plus another, you know, plus the run in La Jolla and there are 2,000 shows or more. So my right. 1,040 shows or whatever I've done pales in comparison. Nonetheless, you know, Frank Do you have a chalkboard at home? You add the performances each day? I was or? thinking about bringing a marker board to work. I haven't done it yet. You said it's 1,000 and It's 1,000. You know what? It was 1,000 on November 29th. And the only reason I, I know it's sort of sad that I know that date, but 1,000 meant something to me. It's 1,000 yeah. shows. And I know nobody had, nobody had performed Frankie that many times. It's a lot of sherry you know what I mean I mean yeah. it's a thousand can't take my eyes off of you and that's <laughs> it's a lot of time singing singing all those songs actually it's 27 songs a show so you're talking about 27,000 songs in Jersey Boys wow. over that amount of time which is sort of kind of crazy um, yeah I it's <laughs> thousands a lot but it's it still feels fresh every night and what's what's wonderful about the show is that there's a brand new audience in there every night who doesn't they don't know how many times you've done it, and if you can right. trick them into thinking that it's your first week, that's kind of that's kind of the goal. Well, you know, we do polls on Broadway.com. Did you see the Jersey Boys poll we did? I did see the Jersey Boys poll. After we, we put some... a list of every actor who's played any of the four guys on Broadway and said who's your favorite, and you won by like a landslide. You are <laughs> you are the chosen Jersey Boy. <laughs> um, um, yeah, that's that's I I'm did really you vote for I'm really humbled. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I voted for Andrew Rannells, and that's not to slight any of my current castmates, but I figured they would get enough of their own votes, so I voted right. for Andrew. Do you feel really, popular? That, that was really humbling. I don't feel any different than I, than I did before, <laughs> but I, I'm, look, I mean, come on, I'm the current guy playing Frankie Valli, so I, I, I would hope that I would put on a decent showing. Um, but to be up there with, with those names of the other guys who've, who've done the other roles, yeah. and, you know, Christian and John Lloyd, and it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's really, it really feels like part of a, a fun little club of guys who have done the show. Do you see the, the women swoon? Do you, do you, when you, you know, I mean, you get to sing these gorgeous songs. I mean, can't right. take my eyes off you. I mean, these amazing songs. Yeah. Do you sort of feel the audience? And I know the, I know a lot of um, uh, middle-aged women, New Jersey. I was actually just going to say, you know, I do really well with 50 and over and 15 and under. Right. I do, I do, I do really well, um, well and with again, those age brackets. I love quoting people from Star Search from 24 years ago. So you actually said the kind of women you like is, you told Ed McMahon, blonde, older women. <laughs> Who do you think wrote those things? I was six years old. Did, did your parents write all your <laughs> of answers? Course. Yeah, I mean, they give, you the, they give you the questions ahead of time. Right. And I don't think they would trust a six-year-old kid, you know, just finished singing and come over and, you know, you have to deal with Ed and Ed's reading off a teleprompter. Everything is already written on there. Right. And you know he asks you your question, and you have to have it ready. To be fair, when I was 
three years old, you know, and on that Al Alberts show, that variety show in Philadelphia, I did. I was in love with Karen Bandara. Now her name is on the internet. Uh, <laughs> she was two years older and blonde, so I think that's where that comes from. Okay, so it's not. You're not about it's not entirely fabricated. Is your girlfriend blonde and older? She, no, she's no younger and redhead. <laughs> so let's talk about your your nightclub act. It's called. Um, it's called Minor Fall, Major Lift. Yes. You have two more dates coming up, January 31st and February, February 7th. 7th. Yes, both um, Monday nights. At Feinstein's. At, at Feinstein's. The Regency. Yep. Do you like playing in a small room? And yes. It's great. It really is. Um, and Feinstein's is beautiful. I mean, I've yeah. played at the Metropolitan Room and the Oak Room at the Plaza and mm -hmm. all these, and every, every room has its strengths. And, you know, th these rooms are so beautiful. And it's, it's really fun. You can really see people and see how your songs are affecting them and, and tell them a story that's really personal. Um, you know, everything I tell is true, and, and the songs have all, you know, are sort of helped to tell the story, and they all have meaning, or they have something I sung. I mean, I sing Splish Splash, which I sang on Star Search way back when. So uh, it's, it's really fun to be in, in that kind of intimate atmosphere with, and, and just be right there with everybody. And especially when it's Jersey Boys fans who have come and they've seen the show and then they see this entirely different side of you and wow, he doesn't only sing in falsetto and... Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, the I press materials it. say that it's about your tumultuous relationship with music. What yes, does that mean? Yes, it's very dramatic, isn't it? Yeah, what does that mean? I, I've had a very... T no, I, I, it's... I've had a tumultuous relationship with music, I guess insofar as I grew up singing because my parents sort of figured out that I could and okay. I just was right. in, in a, as like a little toy robot I kind of just did it and then I sort of rebelled against it as I, as I, as I got older and into my teens and I didn't want to do it and I really I was really against being a professional singer I I still sang you know because that was sort of my thing and because you know deep down I couldn't cover that up mm -hmm. um, but I really did not want to do it and I, I, I was I really hated it I really did. I really hated it for a few years mm. there. And then I sort of got back into it. And the first thing I did was, after I left Princeton, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So I was living at home in Philadelphia. And I sang for a wedding and bar mitzvah band for a year. And you know, that has its ups and downs right there. I mean, right. you're talking about standing up in front of a group of 12-year-olds singing Backstreet Boys songs. And man, <laughs> you know, it's like, that is not the life, the ideal life of a singer. So, um, and not that there's anything wrong with it. Look, it's a great way to make your living, and, and I yeah, certainly was grateful to have had the job for a short while. But you know, and as I got older, I sort of accepted. And I went to acting school again. I, I, I had a downturn. I went to acting school at, at the Atlantic, Atlantic Theater Company right. uh, on 16th Street for two and a half years. It was the best education I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, I left there uh, like all theater snobs, saying I'm only going to do Shakespeare and Ibsen and Shaw from here on and, and Odette and, and that's it. And jukebox mega no, And then <laughs> literally three months afterwards I was cast uh, in the first national tour of Jersey Boys. Well, you're singing like Led Zeppelin in your yes. show. You, yes, you, You're not singing show, do you sing some show tunes? Or? There's no show tunes. You're not really, are you a musical theater guy no, or not? I'm not. You sort I, of it's fell into it's actually one of my, I'm, I'm sad to say that I'm, I'm horribly ignorant in uh -huh. the world of musical theater. So you don't have any dream roles? No, You're not and I'm dying to be in the next Sondheim musical. I want to be in the next Sondheim musical, but it sort of would be my agent would call and say, hey, there's a great role for you, and then I would, you know, ask You'd have friends, to learn it. girlfriend, and say, yeah, and I would, have to, <laughs> right. I would have to learn it, and I would have no idea. But I talk to friends who really know what they're talking about, and I just sit there and, yeah, you know, that sounds really great. Yeah, that would be a really good role. I think you should. You think you should go, you know, I have no idea what I'm talking about. We ask you your New Year's resolution every year, and you graciously come up with one. And actually, this year you said you were going to aggressively go after the things you want. So <laughs> what do you want? What do you want, Jared Spector? What are you I, going after? Oh man, I don't. I want that Sondheim musical. Is what I want. <laughs> no, I, I, I guess every year I'm asked, you know, the questions, especially as I've as I've been in Jersey Boys, and I always sort of give the PC answers. Yes, I want to help with the homeless, or I right. want to give right. back, and I do. I want to do those things, and I, I recycle like a lunatic. But <laughs> I, I also, you know, I think it's okay to want what it is to want what you want. And figuring out what it what that is and, and going after it sort of gives you purpose every day when you get up. And Jersey Boys is a wonderful job, and I absolutely love being in it. I'm so honored to, to have been in it all this time. But you know, at some point, you have to think about, okay, what else can I do, and what can I do next? And I want to start figuring that out. So that's sort of my, my New Year's resolution. I might be in Jersey Boys for another four years if they'll have me. But if not, then whatever that next thing is, I want to figure it out and, and go get it. And you're definitely going to be there for most of this year. Yes, I'm, I'm signed. I'm signed through the fall. So. Wonderful. Yeah, I'll be there a little while longer. Well, everyone should go check out Jersey Boys and Please go to do. Feinstein's at the Regency. Yes, check out Feinstein's at the Regency. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. It's Thank great you. To meet you. Thank you, Paul. Likewise. Wonderful. Great. We'll see you next time.